Hello, everybody. Hello, Tony. Hasn't it been warm lately? Too warm, Vicar. It doesn't feel like Christmas. It doesn't feel like Christmas. That's very much my theme today. We all know that Christmas is meant to be a time of peace on Earth. But, you know, peace doesn't mean not having wars. It doesn't mean not fighting each other. What sort of peace is that? No. As it says in the good book, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall make war. You see, peace isn't just a matter of sitting around, enjoying ourselves, watching television and eating Mr. Sainsbury's excellent mince pies. Thanks, David, for the 200 you sent round to the vicarage. You see, if someone doesn't want peace in this world, then you have to make them. Obviously, you ask them nicely first. But if they keep on refusing, then you have to warn them. And then, after you've warned them a few more times, eventually, you have to give them a punch on the nose. So, let's all give each other the sign of peace. You see, there are times when you have to stand up to the bullies and say, enough is enough. You put down your beastly weapons right now or else. Though, I know this isn't the right approach in all places, is it, Mrs. Mona? Ireland is jolly different from the Middle East, where all the stories in the Bible are set. Now, I know some of the older people in the parish have been saying, why is the vicar the only one in the world to support his friend, the Reverend William Jefferson Clinton, from the Church of the Seven-Day Fornicators. Well, my answer to that is that I am proud to be his friend. He calls me Tony, and I call him Mr. Clinton. That's the sort of relationship we have. And when I think of it, I think of those moving words, stand by your man. Stand by your man. That's from the devotional writings of St. Tammy of Wynnette. And that means standing by him, no matter what he's done, whether in his professional or private life. Not that Mr. Clinton has done anything wrong in his private life, as he himself has been the first to admit. He may have behaved inappropriately, but that's hardly a sin, is it? There's no commandment saying, thou shalt not commit inappropriate behaviour, is there? And while I'm on the subject of friendship, let me thank all my good friends in the parish who sent me such lovely Christmas cards. Um, I particularly like this one from the first Mrs. Cook, showing a traditional robin surrounded by other birds. Although, I'm not sure about this one from our treasurer, Mr. Brown, saying a Merry Christmas and a not very prosperous New Year. Uh, I never think funny cards are very appropriate at Christmas. <clears throat> and talking of not being funny or clever, I certainly don't think much of this card from young William Haig. I saw Mr. Mandelson kissing Santa Claus. Now, as you know, Cherie and I have been pretty busy recently planning our holiday and trying to find a chemist who sells some tan lotion at this time of year. <laughs> So I apologise to anyone I may have inadvertently overlooked and not sent a card to in return, like Mr. Robinson. Oh. Now it's time to open the last window of our advent calendar. Now, does anyone know what we expect to see in the last window? Liam? Teddy Tubbies. Nearly, Liam. Uh, no, the last window is the most important one of all. I Terry, perhaps you could do the honours. Well, you couldn't have a more appropriate Christmas message than that. So now, let us pray. And as usual, Miss Cook will play a suitable piece of music to get us in the mood. The responses this week are on a special sheet which Mr. Mandelson has left out for you on the pews. We particularly remember, at this time, all the old people of our parish who are struggling to make ends meet, 
many of them having failed to make adequate provision for their old age when they were younger, help them to realize that it is all their own fault and they can't rely on the church for a handout. Lord, forgive them. Only themselves to blame. Lord, let us remember the young people, many of whom are struggling to make ends meet and to find jobs, even though there are lots of jobs. Help these young people to invest their money wisely in a second pension, remembering the church's teaching that we should lay up our treasure on earth. Lord, help us to save. Remembering the shares who go down as well as up. Finally, let us remember those who are about to go on holiday. May they have a wonderful time on sun-kissed beaches. May all their cares float away as they sit sipping pina coladas, watching the sun sink over the Indian Ocean. And may everyone else remember that envy is not only unhelpful, but one of the seven deadly sins. Lord, give us a well-deserved break. Now, just a few notices. <laughs> um, Mr. Prescott has asked me to ask you not to bring your cars to the midnight service, but to use public transport instead. Uh, he also wants me to remind you that there won't be any buses or trains over the Christmas holiday. Now, since it's the season of goodwill, I've promised Mr. Brown that I won't read out the bands of his wedding to Sarah McCauley for the 78th time. That's my Christmas present to you, Gordon. <laughs> the Reverend Ashdown of the United Democratic Reform Church has invited us all to his party, but I've had to make it clear to him that he has to come to our party, and I'm happy to say he's agreed. So, while we're all in the party mood, perhaps the children would like to come up and sing the special seasonal song that they've been rehearsing at the St. Albion's Primary School. Thank you. 